This desk case fusion is not for the faint of heart. It's big, it's bold, it's covered in brushed aluminum fingerprint magnet goodness, and it costs a whopping 1500 US dollars. And for those of you who are about to ask, no, that does not include any actual PC hardware. So first thought, <laughs> Ugh. man, this desk is PC porn at its finest. Second thought, hmm, it's covered in fingerprints already. I should have probably been wearing some of these before I loved it. Browse privately and securely with TunnelBear, the simple VPN app. Try TunnelBear for free at the link in the video description. So the journey begins then on a strong note. Unlike our DIY desk PC project, and to a lesser degree, the Vector Desk Mini, the DKO4 comes pre-assembled. So right out of the box, the desk's height can be adjusted via the controls on the front with a height range that's adequate for anyone from Dennis all the way to Terran. My only gripe with this updesk-like functionality is the massive exposed power supply that is visibly positioned inside the case. It makes the movement features feel like kind of an afterthought, and for $1,500, a small metal piece could have easily been used to cover up the power supply. While we're at it, the two six foot cables that cover the short distance between the power supply and the motor and controller probably also could have been cut to size. Aside from that, the interior of the desk is very clean until of course you touch it. And touch it we will. We decided on a balls to the wall content creation rig that reached just shy of six thousand dollars including the desk and all the water cooling components and i know that might sound like a lot and that's because it is the brain of our system was a pretty easy choice intel's core i7 6900k might not be an extreme edition but it's still an eight core monster and the 700 dollars we saved over the 6950x allowed us to splurge on a 1.2 terabyte 750 series nvme ssd for lightning fast system responsiveness as for memory, G-Skill's Trident Z 64 gig kit in white was the perfect mate for our color scheme, or lack of color scheme, as it were. And on that note, the X99 Strix from Asus was perfect for our build, other than the orange lighting, which we really felt had to go. Something we thought would be easy, but not so much. Now there's nowhere to install an IO shield due to the way the rear cables route. So we put that away. Then it was time to work on our lighting. The Strix is Aura compatible, but with the included red, green, and blue dials on the front of the desk, we opted not to use software controls. And I think all the other RGB purists will agree. Individual channel control knobs are the only way to go for full hipster RGB satisfaction. With the board and the desk, the next logical step was a power supply. Corsair's RM1000X was chosen yet again for its simple, understated looks and perfectly overkill capacity, which allows us to keep the fan off even under load. On the subject of cooling, we know you guys have been craving hardline and so the choice was clear. This tubing, it's clear. Also, it's hardline. EK Waterblocks' 12 millimeter clear PETG is affordable and designed to match up perfectly with the plethora of 12 millimeter hardline fittings that they provided in a sleek and sexy black finish. So I'm glad we cleared that up. Speaking of clear, to keep our eight processing cores nice and frosty, there was no debating that EK's Plexitop Supremacy Evo was a great choice for both performance and aesthetics. Not to mention it matches our GTX 1080 that we definitely used instead of a TI because the extra power doesn't make much of a difference while video editing and definitely not because the 1080 TI block didn't show up on time. Yay, customs. 
our 360 millimeter EK PE series radiator mounted on this super bizarre front bracket that doesn't have enough clearance for fans to fit underneath. According to Lee and Lee, this was to save the exterior from the up to 16 fan screws that could be installed in it, but in my opinion, there's still no reason they couldn't have enlarged it for the fans and the screws that would go on them, especially because there's a large magnetic fan filter that covers this area anyway. With the radiator installed, there's just enough room for our X3400 Reservoirs tube, which we mounted on the two and a half inch drive bays, to run next to it. And while the upper drive mounts aren't designed for this purpose, they ended up working quite well. Though, back to the word design, it's kind of a key word here. Lee and Lee's manual talks about radiator mounting, but makes no mention of other water cooling components. So we ended up securing our pump to one of the two lower SSD mounts next to a one terabyte Samsung 850 Evo with a ghetto washer that Jake made out of a cable anchor with some super professional looking electrical tape sleeving. And we just found that that was, while functional, a bit frustrating for such a physically large enthusiast grade product we think some more thought could have been put into the custom water cooling scene rather than just focusing on AIOs. Going back to the tubing, Jake and Ivan went full Linus Tech Tips at this stage and with the build mostly complete, finally took it upon themselves to figure out the best way to route the tubing. In true LTT fashion, they did pull through and ended up with a couple bends that look very clean with the rest of the tubes actually being fairly straight TM with the help of about $150 worth of EK's black hardline and 90 degree fittings. With all the tubing in place and tightened, Jake rigged up an interesting fill port by screwing a funnel into an extension, which did leak a bit, but not nearly as much as the wide open port on the bottom of the reservoir. There was one small leak we discovered shortly after the filling, but other than that, we were golden. Damn, is Hardline ever awesome? When somebody else has to deal with it. Cabling was next, and uh, oh, we sure messed up here. Cables definitely should have been done before filling to prevent possible bump-induced leaks. The result, though, was monochromatic cable mod cables that fit the build perfectly in what I'm calling an uh, alpine white. So with everything installed, the glass on, and uh, after 30 minutes of wiping off all the fingerprints that somehow still managed to get on the brushed aluminum, we've come back to the same conclusion we started with. This thing is gorgeous. And you don't even have to cover it up. I mean, you could put a monitor down on top of your build with the default stand, or you can actually use this mounting point at the back of the desk to install a monitor arm. It does cause some light leakage, but in my opinion, it's a worthwhile trade-off. Which brings us then to the conclusion. If you're a PC enthusiast with a ton of that young cash burning a hole in your pocket, and you were planning on spending a thousand plus dollars on a desk anyway, well then the DK04 could be the perfect product for you. You do need to be a little prepared for Lee and Lee's form before function approach, but considering the alternative, we are now officially out of components to put over there, leading us to more problems. Particle board does not like moisture. Have the controller on the outside. Oh no. Yeah, it actually looks pretty darn appealing. We've teamed up with Zotac and HTC to bring you a truly immersive giveaway. We're giving away one of Zotac's VR Go backpacks and one HTC Vive. HTC Vive is the virtual reality headset that features room scale technology to turn your room into a 3D space, but you're watching this channel, you probably knew that. Basically, it's freaking awesome. And the VR Go allows you to enjoy VR without obstacles 
controls, allowing you more freedom to move while you're playing your games. It's got a Core i7 processor with GTX 1070 graphics, and it sports up to two hours of playtime with a hot swappable battery in the box for nearly endless play. You can even use it as a desktop with a detachable backpack strap. The giveaway will run for two weeks time and it's worldwide. Anyone can enter with no restrictions at all. Enter now through the link in the video description. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured and the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join.